Hello everybody, I'm Jeremy Rorty. I'm Joshua Rorty, Principal Instructors of Rising Phoenix Martial Arts. Uh, we were uh, talking to one of our new Tai Chi students a little while back, Steve, and he was asking us some uh, really interesting questions about our history in the martial arts. And as we started diving into it, we realized, wow, it really is an amazing story. So it inspired us to put together a video series, Tai Chi Twins Origin. Now, outside of just our lineage in the martial arts, we also figured this would be a really good opportunity to address a question we get asked periodically. How do you justify being Jesus followers and at the same time being badasses? And, you know, that's a really good question. And I always point out that the path of the warrior is different than the path of the fighter. And if you get into the right martial arts style, taught by the right master, you're taught a lot of character building that's meant to help make you a warrior who fights for others and to be able to protect people instead of fight for plastic metal trophies or money prizes. So if we take a look at this picture, if you guys have looked at our story about the warrior's path, we have this Master Adoy character in there. And he really kind of embodies that warrior who is now retired and living in the garden instead of a gardener who might get thrust into a war and not know how to fight. So that's a much better position to be in, in my opinion. But he's, he's a retired warrior. He is now taking the youth who are wanting to learn how to protect the village and showing them that path of the warrior and what it takes to be that warrior instead of a fighter. Right, and then one of the questions that's commonly posed to us uh, after that is, well, this is posed to us by both Christians and non-Christians, keep in mind. Don't you believe that God is gonna protect you? Why do you need to learn how to protect yourself? Well, it reminds me of the story of uh, a guy who's stuck in a flood. And he gets himself, his dog, his whole family up onto the roof of his house. And these waters just keep rising up higher and higher. And he starts praying to God, oh God, I'm in trouble. Won't you please help me? And shortly after he gets done uh, praying, here comes this little motorboat. Stops right in front of the house. And the guy from the boat yells up at him, hey, you need some help? Climb into my boat. And the gentleman on the roof yells back down, hey, no thanks, God's going to protect me. I'm going to wait for him to help me out. So the guy in the boat shrugs his shoulders and puts along. Then all of a sudden he hears the thumping of helicopter uh, propellers. And this helicopter comes right over the top of his house and they drop down a ladder. And the guy in the loud megaphone yells down, hello, sir, we're with the U.S. Army. We're here to rescue you. And the guy shouts back up at him, Hey, that's okay. I'm praying to God. God's going to help me. I don't need your help. And so the guy on the helicopter shrugs his shoulders and ends up leaving. And the whole time, the waters get higher and higher. And now it's just his whole family standing on the ridge of the roof. And the guy cries out to God, Lord, Lord, I'm praying to you. Why won't you help me? And God shrugs his shoulders and says, hey, dude, I sent you a boat and I sent you a helicopter. What else do you want me to do? So, uh, you know, it just kind of highlights God won't always necessarily help directly. He's not going to stop that bullet that's flying at you. But sometimes he will put that angel in your life specifically to help you with what you need. And you need to look out for those angels. And that's just it. The path to black belt is a very difficult one. The higher rank you go in your training, the more difficult the challenges are. It takes a long time to achieve that black belt, and so a lot of times life will try to get in the way and steer you away from that goal. But God will put angels in your life to help guide you back to that path and help you break through those obstacles. So we did a little bit of digging around on the internet, try to find some stats that helped emphasize this point. A lot of places that I looked said 5%. 
of people made it to a black belt. Uh, some places said 1% of people made it to a black belt. So if we take a look at that number, if we have 10,000 people that started training in the martial arts, about half of those would quit within the first six months. It means they probably wouldn't even make it past the first one or two ranks. Uh, of those that are remaining, only 1,000 will continue to train for a year. And then another 500 will continue on for two years. And then only 100 will continue on to three years. Of all of that, only 10 of them will actually make it to a first degree black belt. Of those 10 that make it to first degree black belt, only one or two will actually go on to achieve a second degree or higher. And so of those even, only one will go on to open up their own school and teach others the way. And that person is probably the true black belt. One person out of 10,000, that's how rare it is. Our hope is if you get anything from this video series, from hearing our path and what's led us here, we hope that you get that, yeah, the journey is going to be tough. But stay true to your faith. Keep your eyes on your goal. Eventually you will reach it. Let's begin this tale at the place that all good stories should start. The beginning. One very interesting coincidence around our birth is that we were born within about three months of Bruce Lee's death. Question I would have for you is, was Bruce Lee's Kung Fu power so great that when he died, it had to be split into two awesome dragons? Do -do 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 -do. In 1973, they didn't have the technology that we do now of ultrasound and being able to see pictures of the baby while it's still in the womb. Our mom did not know she was having twins. Our heartbeats were pretty well in sync to where they didn't know until right at the point of labor. We'll talk about that more later. But she would swear now, looking back on it, that we were probably in there practicing our Kung Fu. Maybe he was my first bully, taking up all that space in Mama's tummy and taking up all those nutrients from me. He was born first, a little bit heavier than I was, but then my foot was all folded back against my leg from kicking him out first. My extra time in the womb did not go without a price, though, because apparently he had taken my umbilical cord and wrapped it around my neck and choked me out. In all seriousness, though, I was born dead. I was blue and suffocated. It was only because of the angels that were put in that operating room that were able to revive me and save my life. And I couldn't imagine what my life would have been like without him. You know, he was one of the keys as I was growing up in the martial arts and improving my skill of making my skills better. He helped me remember techniques. He would get better than me, and so I'd have to get better than him, and then he'd have to get better than me, and it was just this onward trek all the way to Black Belt. So that was a really big push I would have needed. But when we were born, our mom used this cool little trick of she would paint a fingernail and also use color-coded pajamas so that she wouldn't mix us up in the crib. By the age of two, our mom had moved us up to Wairika where we met some very significant people in our lives. Number one, our grandparents. Very Christ-loving people and our grandpa loved the outdoors and he really enjoyed guns as well. So that ended up being a passion of ours through our life. The other significant people we met were our best friends, Paul and John. John just happened to be living behind us in our first place in Wairika. But these were two of the people as we were growing up that really helped fuel our passion for the martial arts. And also about that same time, our mom met who would soon be our stepdad, Jim. And he would be a very strong father figure in our lives and really help bring us up to be the men that we are today. People are always asking us to share interesting twin stories about psychic connections. We have uh, quite a few of those throughout our lives. So we figured that while we're going through these videos, we'd share a story or two from each one of the age ranges. At this age range, one of the stories that our mom shared with us that is very interesting about twin psychic connection, back when our mom and our father were together, our father had Jeremy up front of the house, uh, sitting on the porch, smoking a cigarette out in the fresh air in the desert just so happened to drop an ash down on him, which burned him. 
I was sleeping the way back of the house, dead asleep, and I woke up all of a sudden screaming because he had gotten burned. Doo -doo 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 -doo. I remember around the age that I was in kindergarten, I had this dream that I shared with Josh about we had been looking for our mother. I was driving a station wagon that she had borrowed from our grandparents every once in a while. And we also had our dogs that lived with us at the time. We're in the station wagon. We're just driving around town looking for our mom. And I was listening to this story with wide eyes because what he was doing was just describing to me the dream that I had just had, detail for detail. Doo -doo -doo -doo.